Hey guys, welcome back to Light Science Studios and today we're talking about one of my favorite subjects, lighting patterns. All right guys, welcome back. So today we're talking about lighting patterns. Now what are lighting patterns? Well, put simply, lighting patterns are patterns created on the mask of the face by contrasting areas of light and shadow. So today I'm gonna to be using a little bit of a higher ratio than what we have currently. And if you haven't seen my video on ratios yet, check it out here in the top right hand corner. And the reason why I'm using a higher ratio is so that you guys will be able to see these patterns a little bit more easily. So let's go ahead and turn down this fill light. Now the pattern you currently see on my face is one of the most commonly used lighting patterns and it is called the loop lighting pattern. Now the loop pattern is given its name because of the loop of light it creates on the mask of the face. So if you're looking at the mask of my face right now, you'll see that the nose shadow is coming off my nose towards the corner of my mouth. This is creating a loop of light. You see the light going around the mask of my face and up through here and it's like a little donut hole of shadow from my nose, which creates the loop. So that's why it's called loop lighting. Now there are two different types of loop pattern, an open loop, which is what you're seeing now, and a closed loop. Let me show you that one. All right, now what you're seeing is a closed loop. And what we mean by that is that that nose shadow we were looking at earlier is now coming down and stretching so far that it's actually connecting to the shadow on the side of my face. Therefore, this loop of light doesn't go continuously all the way around. It stops right here where my shadow is connected to the side of my face. So it's a closed loop as opposed to an open loop, which you saw earlier. Now, there's a very popular variation of closed loop light, which is called Rembrandt light. Now, in my personal opinion, not all closed loop lighting is Rembrandt light. However, all Rembrandt light is a closed loop. And what do I mean by that? Well, by definition, Rembrandt light should create a triangle of light underneath the far eye. When I say the far eye, I mean the eye that is furthest from the main light source. Now the light you see right now is creating a triangle. However, that triangle, the base of it, or the broad part of that triangle, which is at the top, is actually crossing over my eye. Now there's nothing wrong with this. And in fact, it can be very desirable because it ensures that you have a catch light in that eye. And we always like to have catch lights in both eyes. However, true Rembrandt light, again, in my opinion, has that triangle isolated below the eye. Therefore, you typically won't have a catch light in this far eye when you're using true Rembrandt lighting. And in fact, if you look at many of Rembrandt's paintings, he did not have a catch light in that far eye when he was painting his subjects. Okay, I've turned off the fill light completely for this so you can really see the defined shadows. And what you're seeing right now is true Rembrandt light. Notice how the triangle is isolated below my eye and there's actually no catch light in this far eye. Now to achieve this, typically what you're gonna need to do is move your main light source a little further to the side sometimes, but more importantly, a little bit higher because what creates that isolation of the triangle below the eye is the brow line over the eyeball which shades the light from actually hitting the eye. Now some people might not agree with my distinction between true Rembrandt and closed loop lighting, but if you look at a lot of Rembrandt's paintings, you'll actually see that triangle isolated underneath the eye and no catch light in that far eye. It's also important to understand that not everybody's face is suitable for Rembrandt light. Some people of Asian or African descent who have flatter noses and faces can't get that isolated triangle underneath the eye. So if you're working with someone who can't get the true Rembrandt, but you want to make sure you have that nice dynamic lighting, a closed loop pattern works great. And the lighting pattern that you see on my face now is what we call butterfly light, or some people call it paramount light. It's called that because back in the day, Paramount Studios used to use it 
because it's also known as beauty lighting. And so all the pretty girls would be lit this way. Now the term butterfly comes from this little butterfly shaped shadow, which you see underneath my nose. Now it might be a little bit difficult to see it with my mustache, now the way you achieve this lighting pattern is by having your light source directly in front of your subject and just a little bit above eye level. Now it's important to make sure the light isn't too high to where the nose shadow is going down into the lips and that you don't have raccoon eyes where there's no catch lights in the eyes. This lighting pattern works really well to decrease the appearance of wrinkles on a subject's face. However, you need to be careful because it does make the face look broader. So if you have a heavier set subject with a rounder face to begin with, this lighting pattern would not be the best choice for them. All right, so now the lighting pattern you see on my face is what we call split lighting. And that makes sense because as you can see, the light is actually splitting my face in half. Now, a common misconception is that in order to achieve split lighting, your main light source should be 90 degrees to your subject's face. And that's not exactly true. In fact, right now what you're seeing, I have my light to the side, but slightly forward. So instead of being directly pointed at the side of my head, it's actually a little bit forward pointing across my face. And the reason for that is this. If I put this light directly to the side of my face, what you're gonna see happen is some shadows are going to form underneath this eye and you lose a catch light in this eye that's closest to a light. Split light should be evenly split where one side of the face is completely illuminated and the other isn't. So that light should be moved forward instead of being pointed directly at the ear, just move it forward and point it at the side of the nose. Just like that. Now you can see that the left side of my face is completely illuminated and I have that catch light in this eye. Split lighting is very dramatic and is great to use in low key images where you want a nice dynamic drama filled image. Now this last lighting pattern is by far the creepiest lighting pattern there is. It's called monster or ghoul lighting. It's what you get when you sit around a campfire telling ghost stories. Not a very common lighting pattern, but very useful in those certain situations when you want to give a creepy look. It's done by placing the light in the opposite way that you did for the butterfly light. Instead of being in front and above your subject, it's in front and below your subject. Again, key things to look at here is that you have shadows coming up from the nose, up towards the eyes, but you have that catch light in the bottom of the eyes. That's pretty much gonna do it for lighting patterns, guys. There's one or two more that are kind of hybrid patterns like hatchet light and things like that that we're not gonna talk about today, but these are the five primary lighting patterns that are used throughout the industry. But there is one more thing that I wanna to touch on, and that is short and broad light. Now, some of you may have heard of short and broad lighting and some of you may not have, but the one thing that is a big misconception is that short and broad lighting is a lighting pattern, and it is not. Short and broad light are what I like to refer to as types of light. So you have lighting patterns and you have lighting types. Now, those types of light are used in conjunction with different patterns to allow you to sculpt and shape your subject in different ways. Let me show you. Right now we have our standard loop lighting pattern. And I am looking directly at you. So when your subject is looking directly at the camera, you don't have short or broad lighting. You can only get short or broad lighting when your subject turns their head one direction or another. When your subject turns their head slightly one way or another, it puts one side of the face closer to the camera than the other side. That side of the face that's closest to the camera is what we call the broad side of the face. We call it the broad side because if you look at the distance between the bridge of the nose and where my face stops, it's much broader on this side than on this side, which is what we refer to as the short side of the face. Some people call it the narrow side of the face, but short and broad are the standard terms. So how do we define the difference between lighting patterns and types of lighting? Well, here's how I do it. Lighting patterns are determined by the relationship between the light and the subject. So if I change the relationship between me and this light, you're going to get different patterns on my face. Right now, you have a loop pattern. 
If I change the relationship by turning my face toward the light, you're gonna end up with more of a butterfly light. If I change the relationship by turning my head away from the light, you're gonna end up with a split light pattern on my face. So by changing the relationship between your subject and the light source, you will change your patterns. Now, when you change the relationship between the subject and the camera, that is what determines the type of light. So right now I have my face turned slightly to my left. My nose is currently pointing between the camera and the light. What this is creating is a short loop lighting. Short being the type, loop being the pattern, and lighting. So we have a short type of light with a loop pattern. You see the loop pattern here with the shadow coming off the nose? and it's short because the light is illuminating the short side of my face. In other words, the broad side of my face is the one that's in shadow. Now, right now if I turn my head to the right, it would change the relationship between both the camera and the light. So I have to make sure I'm moving the light with my head so that the relationship between my face and the light doesn't change. We only wanna change the relationship between my face and the camera. So I'm gonna move the light closer to the camera and I'm gonna turn my face. So we'll do this. I'm gonna bring the light over. And I'm gonna turn my face just as much to the right. Now the relationship between the light source and my face hasn't changed, but the relationship between my face and the camera has. So as a result, what you see now is what we call broad loop lighting. Broad being the type of light because now the side of my face that is closest to the camera, which is the broad side, is the side that's being illuminated. So when the broad side of the face is the side that's being lit, that's broad lighting. But the pattern is still a loop pattern, which you can see here by the shadow coming off the nose. So now we have broad loop light and we achieve that by changing the relationship between my face and the camera, but keeping the relationship between my face and the light the same. Many people have a hard time doing broad loop lighting because they will keep that light over where it is and just turn the head. When that happens, now I don't have loop lighting on my face because I've changed the relationship between my face light and camera. So I have a split light pattern and broad light. So you can see how types of lighting can be used with different patterns. I could be broad lit with a split pattern or I could be short lit with a loop pattern. The only patterns you really can't combine with different types of lighting are butterfly and monster or ghoul lighting because those are up and down whereas the types of lighting are determined by the horizontal relationship between your subject and the camera. But loop, closed loop, Rembrandt, split light, you can combine all of those with short and broad to give you a variation of each with any of those patterns. Short loop lighting is the one pattern and type combination that are going to make 99% of people look their best. And the easiest way to achieve that is to simply make sure they are pointing their nose between the camera and the light source. Notice that when I do that, I have a loop pattern and it's a short lighting. So you always wanna make sure when you're lighting your subject that you know ahead of time how you're gonna have their head oriented and that you then give enough space between the camera and the light to make sure they can point their nose between the two. If the light was too close to the camera, they wouldn't have any room to point their nose between the two and you're gonna end up with a flat type of light. Well guys, I really appreciate you hanging out with me again today. I hope you got something out of this video. And again, please leave comments below letting me know the other things you'd like to learn about. I'm happy to make videos based on your interests and I wanna make sure I'm producing content that is relevant and helpful to you. If you enjoyed this video, please remember to leave a like and subscribe and hit that little bell icon so you get notified every time I upload. I look forward to hanging out with you next time guys and we'll see you later.
Jeez. Ugh. Damn it. <laughs> 